We bring you the witch's tale, written and produced by Alonzo Dean Cole. The witch's tale. <laughs> It is our purpose in these programs to perform a double function by providing thrilling entertainment and also by bringing you important information in a brief message. Tonight's message may save you or other members of your family needless, needless suffering from distressing pain. I refer to pains which you recognize as rheumatism or neuritis or discomfort in the kidneys and the back. Now, most of you know that for many years, wealthy people were sent to famous European mineral springs and came back reporting enthusiastically that the expense of the trip was well worthwhile. Those European mineral waters relieved them of the pains of rheumatism, neuritis, and kidney troubles, and renewed vital energy was reflected in their faces and in every step they took. Now, I've reminded you of this so that you will understand why Crucian salts relieves pains of rheumatism and similar ailments so quickly and effectively. You see, Crucian was developed to duplicate the therapeutic effects of those famous European springs. Crucian contains those elements in a balanced combination of six mineral health salts. Doctors know this remarkable Crucian formula, know that it is absolutely harmless and marvelously effective. That is why Crucian is prescribed by more doctors throughout the world than any other medicinal source or crystal. If you are subject to rheumatism and neuritis or kindred ailments, let Crucian gently but surely rid you of the poisons which have secretly accumulated in your system, and you will be amazed at the result. For these poisons circulate through the bloodstream and set up an aggravated pain that gradually gets worse if it isn't properly relieved. Don't put up with it needlessly another day when your nearest drug counter has Crucian. That word Crucian, spelled K-R-U-S-C-H-E-N, has meant joy to millions of grateful people. In countless homes, it keeps happy folks free from acidity, free from acid-caused headaches, sour stomach, and flatulence, and free from the aches and pains of rheumatism, neuritis, and distressed kidneys. As your doctor will confirm, all these troubles can be related to each other. So tomorrow, join the millions who keep themselves feeling fit and looking fit due to crucian. Learn for yourself what it means to always have that crucian feeling. And now for our visit to old Nancy and her wise black cat. <laughs> Hannah and five year old I be today. Yes, sir. Hannah and five year old. We'll say them. It's a real bedtime story we got for folks tonight. <laughs> Everybody does out them lights so we have it nice and dark. Our little, little tales is best listened to amongst the ghostly shadows. Now draw up to the fire and gaze into the embers. Gaze into them deep and soon you'll be across the sea in England. There begins our yarn of Rockabye Baby. <laughs> Rockabye Baby. <laughs> Mr. Melvin. You don't honestly believe what you just said. Oh, yes, my dear fellow. There's a room in the east tower of this old mansion which is positively haunted. Mrs. Beckett, he's just fooling, isn't he? No, indeed, Mrs. Christie. I share Mr. Malvin's opinion that his tower room is queer. So do I. I wouldn't enter the place at off the sundown for 20,000 pounds. Robert, I never heard of such a thing. Three grown-up people believing in ghosts. <laughs> well, everybody's entitled to their own opinions, honey, but... I warn you, ladies and gentlemen, that my wife and I came from Missouri. Missouri? You know, so many Americans say they come from that great state. It must be very populous. Uh, but, George, I understood Mr. and Mrs. Christie to say their home was in, um, 
Oh, such a difficult name. <laughs> Robert and I were born in Kentucky, Mrs. Beckett. <laughs> <laughs> it's only since you mentioned spooks that uh, we've been from Missouri. <laughs> I, was, I don't understand. Uh, I do. But whether you believe us or not, Mr. Christie, the fact remains that no one can pass a night in the room I speak of. You mean to tell me that I couldn't stay there? My dear fellow, you'd find it an utter impossibility. Is that so? Well, say, now look here, I'm just... Robert, you be still. Let Mr. Malvin tell us about the place. What's supposed to happen is so scary, Mr. Malvin? Well, wait, we have another drink to make the yarn seem better. Yes, capital idea. I'll be the barmaid. You better not take any more drink. Of course I'm having more. But this will make you sick this evening. Well, what if it does? I know how to handle my liquor, Susie. <laughs> when I hear you married couples quarrel, I truly appreciate my bachelorhood. Oh, please don't think that Robert and I were quarreling, Mr. Mal. Oh, I, I should say not. <laughs> Our little arguments never mean anything, do they, Rockabye Baby? Rockabye Baby? <laughs> now, that's just a little family secret. Yeah, one that goes way back. Way, way back, don't it, honey? <laughs> but now, Mr. Malvin, suppose you tell us what awful things happen in that haunted room of yours. Yeah. Just what sort of a person is you, family ghost? Well, it's the uneasy spirit of an ancestor of mine. His portrait hangs here upon his wall. That old gentleman in the red suit? Robert, he looks just like pictures of Sir Walter Ross. He lived at the same age. And like Raleigh, he died by the headsman's axe. His head was chopped off? Yes, he went to the block for murder. I blush to admit that my ancestor was a cold-blooded killer of the most depraved type. He was a sadistic strangler. Whom did he strangle? Old records placed a number of his victims as between uh, 30 and 40. Say, hmm. that room in the tower was the scene of his crimes, which may be the reason his evil spirit lingers there. Oh, bunk. Uh, pardon me, Malvin, but you can't convince me that spirits linger anywhere on Earth. Still, the fact remains that no one can remain in that room after nightfall. You said that before, so I reckon you believe it, but I'll remain in your haunted room any night you say. <laughs> if I permitted it, you wouldn't see it through. Is that so? Say, are you a betting man? On occasion, why? Because I'll bet you a hundred dollars that I'll stay in your tower room tonight. Me too, Robert. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Sorry, old chap, but I never make a wager of less than a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds? That's five thousand dollars. Well, if Mr. Malvin insists on throwing money away, I'll just take him for a thousand. Mm -hmm. Very well. I'll make out my check. You cover it. And Beckett here will hold the stake. I'll cover it. Where's the fountain pen? Oh, you can use mine, old chap. The terms are that you will remain in that room from midnight until sunrise. If you fail, your wager is forfeit. And when we come down cheerfully to a late breakfast, you forfeit yours. Exactly. Here's my check, David. Here's mine. Right, sir. It's nearly midnight now. Take us to your table, Mr. Malvin. I'm just dying to see the place. Very well. well. There's no electricity in the room, but you'll have plenty of candles and be quite comfortable at first. Oh, do you carry a pistol, Christy? A pistol? What would Robert be told a pistol? Well, since you have none, I'll lend you one of mine. One has a feeling of security with a gun in his possession, even though it will prove of little value against the dead whom you may meet. Well, <laughs> will you listen to this man, Susie? If he keeps Tony Lamb, me believing in his gold. Believe as you like. But at the first indication of something abnormal in that room, I advise you to consider your lives rather than your wager. <laughs> if we see a spook big enough to drive us out of that room, I'll consider it worth a thousand pounds. That's why we came to England, because we hoped something different would happen. I have an idea that tonight you shall see something very different, Mrs. Christie. I'm quite positive that you shall. <laughs> One o'clock, honey. We've been here over an hour. Uh -huh. <laughs> this must be the night when Malvin's ghost don't work. Yeah, I reckon. But I've got to confess it. When we first came in here, I had cold shivers running up and down my spine. <laughs> well, I don't wonder. This is sure enough what a haunted room should look like. Yes, it's so full of spooky shadows and dark corners. You know, I'm not scared of anything, but I'm awfully glad we have so many cows here. It wouldn't be very cheerful without them, that's a fact. You know, to folks who were the least bit superstitious, all that talk that Malvin handed out and the appearance of this old room, well, well their imaginations might get working so they'd be scared to death. Yes, imaginations are powerful. <coughs> oh, what's that? I don't know. 
Oh, I see. Honey, it's just an old loose shutter banging again in the window. Look. Oh, it startled me. Pretty old room, this, isn't it? I mean, if you let your imagination get going. No, no danger you and me doing that. Well, I should say there isn't. Only, Robert, what you think makes Mr. Malvin so sure that something's going to happen here tonight? Of course, we've only known him a couple of weeks, which is hardly time enough to judge, but he doesn't strike me as the sort of man who'd bet a thousand pounds for, well, just for the fun of betting. Well, Melvin isn't the kind you call a natural chance-taking gambler, is he? He must believe there's something queer about this room and the system you take his gun and all. Oh, that's because he and the Beckett's are just superstitious idiots. Still, I, I shouldn't be making crackpot bets like this. Guess I've been drinking a little too much lately, Susie. I'm afraid you have been, Robert. Oh, I don't care about the foolish things that makes you do like betting, but Robert... It's pulling you away from me. Oh, no, Susie. Yes. We're drawing away from one another. Away from the time you used to hold me on your knee and... Sing your rock a baby. Like a crazy lunatic. Yes. But it wasn't crazy. It was something precious. We were just kids when you sang it to me. First, I was only five. And I was nine. <laughs> With a mother instinct. Don't, don't make fun about it. You did it because you love me. As we grew up, you kept on doing it all the time we were going together, while we were engaged, and first after we were married. You have a very good singing voice, Robert, and you helped me uncomfortably most times, but... But that song was a foolish, wonderful secret between us two. It was a kind of symbol of our love, and... Don't sing it to me anymore. I haven't forgot our love, Susie. And I haven't forgot our song. Come here, my knee, honey. You gonna be rocked in my arms right now. Oh, Robert, Robert, you're losing my dress. <laughs> what do we care about an old dress and this important thing to be done? <laughs> I love you, little sweetheart. Darling, I love you. Rock a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the bow. What's that? I don't know. Oh. Oh, it's just the window curtains flipping in the wind. Yeah, but it sure ruined my song. Say, look here, honey. If you're getting nervous about that room, this old room, that thousand-pound bet don't mean anything to I'm, me. I'm not nervous. Why should I be when there's nothing here to be nervous? Robert, two of our candles just went out. Candle? Yes. Oh, the wind must have blown. Light them again, will you? There, there isn't any too much light here when all of them are going. Well, that's a fact, eh? Say, Mr. Beckett borrowed my matches and forgot to give them back. Take one of the candles that's going and relight the others for me. That's an idea. Go on, go on. This one went out. It's a reefball. Well, close the window and shut out the wind that's doing it. Yeah. There. Now they'll be all right. Robert, there goes another candle. Well, the wind didn't blow it out. Not with the window closed. Well, I wonder what... Dear, another's going. That's funny. These candles just suddenly flicker out and die. There goes another. What caused again? I don't know. There goes another. Read out him quick. If you don't, we'll be in darkness. Oh, I will, honey. Don't you be scared. Oh, two more went out. There's only three left. I'll get one of them and... That one's gone now. This one just went. Only one's left. Now it's gone now. Robert. Robert, put your arms around me. Hold me tight. Now, here I am, honey. Here I am. I made those candles all go out. I don't know. But there's some natural explanation for it. Don't you be scared. I'm not. Only I can't bear this darkness. Take me to the window where the moon's shining. In. Yeah, yeah. Quick. Come on. We'll get in the light. The shadows all about it, shadows. Such ugly shadows. There's only shadows, Susie. This is just a plain old room. Nothing here can hurt us but our own imagination. I know. It, it isn't possible that old murderer who lost his head for strangling folks will come back here from the grave. Of course it's not. Imagination is all the ghosts are made of. Yes. Imagination. Just imagination. Sounds like footsteps. They're in this room. No, oh, they can't be. We'd have heard the door open. There's only one door to this room. Something shadow don't have to come through door. No, honey, no. Don't say such thing. Robert! Robert, look! It's just a shadow! No! No, it's a man without a head! Whoever you are, keep back! I have a gun. I'll take you full of lead! It's moving towards us! Shoot! No, don't let it go! Don't stop it! It's a dead! Come back to him! It's reaching out his arm! It's strangling your hand! Well, I'll throw! No! No!
Oh, now she's free. So did he. Then she dropped to the floor, fainted most likely, and I made my getaway. Quick, help me out of this costume before he brings up in the room. With Agnes down the hall, she's totally ready. Oh, what a cushy game this is. A secret passage to that room, candles with prepared wicks, and your ghastly headless makeup. Not forgetting the way I built the story up. Any fool who bet he's not afraid of ghosts, and the gun with tampered cartridges made him sure it was the dead they shot at, besides ensuring me they'd use no weapons of their own. I told you this was the greatest easy money scheme I ever had. It certainly appears so. And this is only the first time we've worked it. With all the silly chumps that are in London, we'll soon make a fortune at it. I'm all right now. Hide that costume in the cupboard. Right, so. <laughs> hurry, hurry. Agnes can't stall in the hall much longer. Well, I'm with you now. Open the door. Well, there's Agnes. George, she's alone. What? Chris's aunt with her? No. Agnes. Haven't they come out yet? No. And there hasn't been a sound from that room since they screamed. I told you this thing was too fantastic to succeed. You frightened them, all right. But then their common sense returned. And now they're in there laughing at us. I won't believe that. They were terrified. Then why haven't they come out? What's that? What? His voice. He sings. Yes, rockaby baby. A lullaby to let us know your ghost won't spoil his beauty sleep. You terrified him? Oh, be still. There's something queer about that song. What do you mean? That singing is queer. I'm going to find out why. Give away my door, you fool. No. There's something wrong in that room. Give me that thing. Come on. George, the axe of birds doesn't see us. And his wife lies so still in his arms. Oh, God. I think, I think she's dead. Dead, all right. Dead of fright. And he was mad. A childish innocent. God, I can still hear that lullaby he sang over and over and over as he rocked her body in his arms. <sighs> Beckett and I left him the next morning. I've been here in Paris ever since. Five years. But Beckett took dead, you say? Yes. Train wreck and tells you. Six months after the Christie thing happened. Unfortunate. Unfortunately, it didn't happen sooner. The poor judge got drunk and glad the story. It's never been known otherwise. That's how you came to hear of it, I suppose. Indirectly, yes. But it's only recently I learned that you were Malvin. I have to change my name. Christie's relatives were looking for me. People from his part of the States go in for vendetta, like the Corsican banditti, I've heard. But since you're an American, you probably know more about Kentuckians than I do. But I know their reputations. Christie himself is dead now. Yes, I saw him in the papers. Died singing rock of my baby, I suppose. Oh, let's not talk about it anymore, I wouldn't mention the thing, only you sort of drag it from me. <laughs> you shouldn't mind discussing anything with me. I don't. I trust you. You're my kind, a wise one, an easy money schemer. The only bit of luck I've had in the past five years was meeting you. Luck for me as well. To meet such a clever, imaginative fellow who can use his wits to get what fools must work for. Joan, will you marry me? Marry you? Yes, I'm mad about you. We'd make a great team with your looks and my experience. <laughs> the easy money would just roll in. Oh, oh, oh Melvin, this is so sudden. Oh, I, I don't blame you for laughing. <laughs> I forgot I'm wearing shabby, worn-out clothes, and I'm down and out. I has been. On my word, I don't know why you even sit and talk with me in such a public place as this cafe. If you can get back your nerve, you won't be a has-been any longer. My nerve? Yes. The Christy thing broke you. You've admitted since that night in England, you haven't had a bit of luck. It isn't luck that's been against you, but your mind. I'll tell you why I've met you here each day. It's because I think we would make a great team. Melvin, if you can prove to me that you're a man and not a coward, I'll go along with you. I'll marry you. Joan, if you mean that, I'll do anything you say. All right. Tomorrow we go to England. I don't dare. It's nonsense. Five years is a long time. They'll have forgotten why you ran away by now. And we're going back to live in your ancestral estate of Melvin Manor. No. Yes. Your scheme of the haunted room and headless ghost is the greatest I ever heard. We're going to work it for everything it's worth. I'll never try that again. You will. It's a perfect racket. 
Only a man of imagination could have planned a game like that. Imagination. Yes, I have imagination, all right. An imagination that for five years has kept that room before my eyes. That's dinned it into my ears. A madman's song. All right. It's told nerve. But I can't return to that house to get it back. All right, then. You and I are... No, 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 don't say that. Oh, don't go away, Joan. I'll, I'll do anything you say. Then you go to Malvern Manor. And I marry you. On condition that our bridal night is spent in that tower room. Bridal night? In that tower room? Yes. As you regain your nerve, you'll also gain a wife and partner. <laughs> that appeals to uh, my imagination. <laughs> you see, I have imagination too, dear. It's a great thing in our life. Mind these narrow stairs, Joan. Don't want my brand new wife to have a fall. Dad, it's good to be in this old house again. I knew you'd enjoy your return, Malvin Manor. You're right. Make me come here. Has given me back my nerve. What a chump I was to stay away from England all these years. <laughs> the Christie affair simply made the natives here believe that old room is really haunted. Good example of how ghostly legends start. Yes. Imagination needs but a grain of sand to build a mountain. Well, here we are, dear. The tower room in my bridal night. Yet I've waited and longed for this. Oh, I. How long you lived here with only the candlelight? It's not a very cheerful place. But it was your idea that we occupy it. Let me close the door. No, at last. We're alone. I wonder if we're alone. Of course we are. How can you be sure? In a room where you've seen a ghostly legend start. I... Where did you find Robert Christie singing Rockabye Baby? Joan, let's not talk about that now. I wish to talk about it for your nerves' sake. The room this is for the scheme you were. So full of eerie shadows. Yes, it's... It gave me the idea to play on fool's imagination. What's that? I, I think a shutter blew against the wall outside. Oh, that's <laughs> it startled me. Take to this room. Anything might happen here, especially in the darkness. Joan. What? Their candle just went out. Eh? Must be a draft. Oh, it's possible the windows are closed. There goes another. What made them go out? Well, perhaps their wicks have been tampered with. Like those which you once used. No, no one has any reason to play such a trick on me. Of course not. There'd be no easy money in it. There goes another candle. And another. There go three at once. Where are my matches, Joan? You borrowed them. And all the candles have gone out. Let me find the door. What? You're not afraid to be in the dark? Afraid? Oh, what rot? You brought me here to prove my nerve. I'll show you it's all right. Only, Joan, come here where I can see you by this little bit of moonlight. Where are you, Joan? What's that? John, is it your footsteps I hear? Is it you who's walking toward me? John, why don't you answer me? Ah! Christine's here! I see him in the moonlight! Christine, risen from the dead! you hear the team, Alvin, to see and hear the walking dead. Now you know the terror he ensues in you. It's Robert Christie's sister whom you married, Malvin. Five years I've searched for you until I found you to bring the only justice that would fit your crime. <laughs> Go against that wall and stare at him in fear. Oh, Robert's still alive. I can't command the dead, or Susie would be with him. But you know the power of imagination now. Look at him, alive, a helpless, harmless madman whose only lucid moments are memories of horror. He and his physician have been hidden in this house for days, waiting for you to come here on your bridal night. <laughs> your bridal night. I promised you our wife and partner. Your wife is fear, your partner death. So now I'm going to kill you. Turn your eyes from Robert and look into this gun. Turn your eyes and look upon it as I fire it at your heart. As they say something, look at me before I shoot. Look at me, I say. No one. Is that you, Doctor? Yes, yes, that's it. Oh, wait. It's I've come to tell you. Oh, never mind. 
Come in and bring that candle. All I want you to tell me is, what's the matter with this man? Here he is, leaning against this wall. Look at me, Melbourne. Doctor, he fell as I touched him. This man is dead. That gun in your hand, did you? No. Oh, no, I, I didn't kill him. By the front. Susie did. Imagination. Imagination. Miss, Miss, you're hysterical. You've got to pull yourself oh. together. I don't know what's happened in this room tonight, but it's still another shock that you'll spare. Shock? Yes, your brother. My, my brother? Where did Robert go? He was with me here just before I let you in. He was with you here? Of course. You sent him as I told you to. Up that secret passageway when I pressed the signal button. But I couldn't say him. Before your signal came, your brother's heart stopped beating. My, my brother... Robert died ten minutes ago. You knew his condition. His heart just stopped. That's what I came up to tell you. But, but I tell you, my brother was here. Doctor. Look, look, among those shadows there. Robert. And Susie's in his arms again. Huh. Imagination. Huh. Imagination. You never can tell about imagination, Satan. You never can tell why it begins or why it ends. <laughs> now, you folks, sit, sit still a minute, and we'll come back and tell you about the cheerful little yarn we've got for you next week. <laughs> Satan, next week when these folks come to see us, we're going to take them to Chinatown at San Francisco. To Chinatown. <laughs> and now uh, we're going to spin him our yarn of the confession. The confession. <laughs> This is Watch Waddle Cartoons on the Baba Ghoulie Radio Show, signing off for the evening. Whoopsie!